In this video, we are going to solve a linear elastic problem using FEA in MATLAB. The problem is simply finding the displacement of a 1D bar subjected to some forces and boundary condition. But uh, in this case, we are using a three noted element, which basically, which basically means that we are using higher order shape function to interpolate the displacement phase. So this is basically a 1D bar subjected to some forces and some boundary conditions. We uh, represent this bar by this straight line. Now let's divide this uh, bar into three elements. So in generally, uh, in the previous video, we have seen that each element had two nodes as it represented here. But in this case, we have three nodes associated with each element. So like this for element one we have three nodes and similarly for two and three okay so the total degree of freedom associated with each node is one because just each node could, could move only in one direction that is x direction and the number of nodes per element is three that is a new thing and the total number of nodes is uh, two into number of elements plus one as you can simply see the pattern here for two elements we have five for three elements we have seven which is 3 into 2 plus 1. The total number of degrees of freedom is always total number of nodal points into degree of freedom associated with each node, which is in our case as 1. So the number of total degree of freedom is equal to the number of total nodes. And the size of the stiffness matrix is always number of degree of freedom cross number of degree of freedom for any FE problem used in solving elastic problems, linear elastic problems. So size of stiffness metric is always nd of cross nd of for our problem uh, the number of degree of theorem is 7 cross 7. the stiffness matrix that's come out of minimizing minimizing the potential energy using this kind of discretization is like is this and directly using the result where e a and l are the properties of that particular element which are which we are considering to be constant they could be variable considered to be variable with x and we'll look into such problems in the later videos so so this is the stiffness matrix which is 3 by 3 dof cross dof for a particular element and uh, so let's try to generate our global stiffness matrix so the global stiffness matrix looks something like this, which is seven cross seven, because the total number of nodes were seven and total of degree of freedoms was also seven. Now, let's calculate the stiffness matrix for element one. It looks something like this. And since the node number is one, two, three, and one, two, three for element one, the stiffness matrix goes into that particular spot represented by the red square represented by this red square for element two element three as we, as we can see the number of the node numbering is three four five so here we have put three four five three four five and for third it's five six seven and five six seven so here it goes now we are going to add this or overlap these three matrices together and what we get is this. This is for element one. This is element two. This is element three. As you can see, that the these squares or the stiffness matrices overlap at these coordinates three comma three and five comma five, which are the nodes shared by the by the elements. Had it been a two D case or a three D case where or two nodes are shared by the elements then this overlap would be a two cross two square we'll see such examples in the later videos so this is what we had and adding this we get this so in the algorithm what we'll what we will do we will evaluate the ke from the formula that we have seen in the previous slide and we evaluate this we put it at its location we evaluate this and we add it we add this matrix to this matrix okay and we go on depending on the number of elements that we have 
Now applying the boundary conditions or the part partitioning of the matrices. So consider this case. We have node six and node one fixed, and we have applied a four to the node three. Okay. So what we'll do? We cross out node one, the row one, and the column one, uh, uh, row six, and the column six because they are fixed. If we had specified the displacement at node six, there is a slightly different way to handle the partitioning. And this method where displacement zero is a special case of that particular method. Okay, so similarly for the force vector, we eliminate the root one, rows one and the row six. And what we get is a five cross one force vector and a five cross five uh, stiffness matrix. We call them K part, and this is actually U part. V because already the displacement at node one and six are zero. So this is a, a partial displacement uh, vector. And this is the force vector. This is the partition status matrix. We have arranged these blocks as depicted in this figure. Now let us see how uh, this is implemented in MATLAB. So once we have this, you have this equation k u equals to f. We invert the k and we evaluate the displacement. And later we'll move toward the visual visualization of our results. So let's move to uh, MATLAB. So the codes look something like this. Uh, here the length of the bar is one. The cross section area is one. We have specified the uh, Young's modulus. The number of elements here we have considered it to be three, just as we seen in the examples. Okay, so the number of nodes is two into n l plus one. The k would be n n p cross n n p. We have just initialized these matrices as zero matrices. And length of each element is L divided by number of elements. Okay, so this is how it the variables looks it's k7 cross 7 and nrp7. Okay, this what we are doing in this loop is we are calculating a range for element 1. For each element, it this loops run as uh, uh, for each element once. And the range is one, two, three for element one, which is as we have seen uh, here, one, two, three for element one, three, four, five, and five, six, seven. Okay, so we add at that place the element stiffness matrix that is given by here. Similarly, for element two, the range is three, four, five. We evaluate this and we add to the case the global stiffness matrix okay so this, this is how now the k looks seven cross seven it is banded you can also type it here and see this is how it looks overlapping at 1.4 and here also 1.4 okay now we need to apply the boundary condition or the partitioning so the fixed nodes is uh, in this case i have taken it to be one in nnp nnp is the last node which is the one and seven these nodes are fixed and uh, nnp by uh, we have i have some randomly i have for i mean for this code i randomly have fixed uh, two and four nodes using this function just I just wanted if we increase the number and we'll see just use some function to apply nodes, uh, force at particular nodes. So fixed node is one seven and force is applied at two and four and the value is this minus 500 and 100. So the force vector look like this. So now we have, we are going to partition it. So K part is K free node cross free, free nodes. It's two, three, four, five, six. And the free node is two, three, four, five, six. Okay, only the fixed nodes were one and seven. I use a set exclusive or x uh, function to find out these free nodes 
okay so the next step is solving the linear set of equations to get the displacement so we get up like this and since at uh, n and p n one and in rows and uh, and we add the free nodes displacement value that we have obtained and uh, the rest of the values are zero because they are fixed so here after this uh, there are visualization techniques first is uh, generating uh, the x coordinate for each of the node and finding displacement at uh, that particular node we get something like this it's the first plot this is the displacement as we move along x okay and uh, the next figure that we are going to look into is uh, the variation of displacement with l okay the maximum displacement comes out to be 10.4 into 10 to the power minus 10 meters okay so the another alternate way of visualization is uh, this using patches so each line here represents a node actually and uh, these two uh, blocks makes one element similarly here okay so this is the stress contours uh, sorry displacement contours and for stresses uh, we have also evaluated the stresses let's see the stress variation it looks something like this Let us now increase the number of uh, elements to say 20 and use the same conditions. Okay. Let's see what we get. We get this sort of results. A better approximation for the stresses and uh, displacement results shown here this three are displacement this is the stresses we could go on increasing number of element size we could uh, uh, let's change the boundary conditions now let's let's uh, uh, fix just node one and uh, apply force at the end only and the load is thousand say okay let's see what happens now okay so tensile stress is constant for this case it's simply uh, the bar fixed at one end this displacement is also will be looked will look something like this a linear displacement because simply pl by a or px by a so displacement is proportional to x in this case when the slopes of p by a so basically the stiffness p by a is a stiffness for the bar so this is how this code works i'll share the code and you could play with it mm, thanks for watching